This is the actual uh, medicinal material as it's looked after initial harvesting and drying in Gansu, things we probably never really see in the U.S. market. These would be top grade Hong, uh, this is top grade Gongwe, very large. So the key features of the medicinal material are main roots that are thick and long, oily and moist, a yellowish brown outer skin, full and fleshy with a whitish yellow fractured surface and a potent aroma. And then, um, Jin Shri Yuan talks about some of these other features being that there's few lateral roots. When we go back and look at this, there's, four, there's like five or six major roots coming off the head. Not a lot of lateral rootlets, so we think tap roots that, that's thick and long, few lateral roots, oily and smooth, the color the, and the odor. Uh, and then comparing some of these known growing regions, the product from Gansu actually has a longer tap root and a solid character, and it has a little bit more weight by volume. The stuff that's grown in Yunnan is a little bit shorter, a little bit tubby like a fist. The skin is thicker, it's lighter by volume, and the aroma is a little bit different. So, this is really so fascinating, but as someone who's trying to grow it, I feel really cut off, like, knowing that it is being processed like that. What are you supposed to do? Try uh, yeah, I mean, there's a few things to do. One is to, yeah, I mean, you can, like, I'm a, I initially started this whole thing because I studied herbs and it didn't make sense not studying the live plant. Like, me and Vera used to work in the learning garden down in L.A. and it was like, it sucks learning herbs from a book. In the garden, it's like so amazing. And you harvest them and you process them and, and you, like, taste them and then you compare and it's like, the learning is amazing. Um, and, you know, we got into spreading out the medicinal material everywhere. Everybody learn and learn. And it's like, that's a great benefit of having the material. Well, Don Blay is one of them. A very intricate process. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like, it, it is what it is. I mean, from my perspective, it's like, you just, it's, if it's not Don Blay, then you should just not do it. You know what I mean? It's like, then the sidetrack becomes so, um, Angelica Sinensis. We, what do we have locally that can be a local analog for Angelica sinensis? You know what I mean? Some, some of the native Angelicas or, uh, yeah, it's hard. I mean, I have more to my story, which is going to disappoint you even more, so just wait for it. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, that's why things have happened the way they've happened. This is the information I'm providing. So Dong Wei is divided into these criteria for classifications of quality. The number one class is going to have less than 40 branches per, per kilogram. Um, and, and so on. Second class has more than 70. Third class has more than 110. It goes on and on and down. We've grown this stuff at Bastyr and uh, when we harvested it looked like that. It has like 5,000 lateral roots per plant. Um, and it smelled like nothing. No aromatic comp content and, and no, no real tap root. Why do you think that was? Um, well, I mean, because of all these things. It's like it's the wrong elevation. It's like it's, um, the soil isn't very deep. It's kind of muddy. It, there's a lot of water there. And I don't have any idea about the quality of the seed that we're growing. Well, how old is it? Two years old. Yeah, and in the third year, it just got smaller and worse in, this, in that growing <laughs> region. Yeah, and so this is up close, you know, and then divided. And uh, last year, I went out to Joe Hollis's farm in North Carolina. And I, and I spent a week with Joe. What's this? Terrible. Joe has the same problem that I have in Seattle. Joe is like a master of growing angelicas. He grows every single angelica on the face of the earth. And he's in North Carolina in Burns County, which is a better elevation. And it looks somewhat closer because we have these analogous regions between the East Coast and the East Coast of China. But really, Gansu doesn't have much to do with the East Coast of China. Um, and Joe's finding was the same exact thing. No aroma whatsoever. Joe sent it down to one of the local, like Rocky Mountains, one of the local universities to do gas chromatography on it. And it turned out it had none of the marker constituents, so it didn't smell. So there was no reason to send it down there anyway. But when you send it down there, the chemical analysis said the same thing. It had none of the marker, none of the aromatic compounds in it. Why is he growing? Huh? Why did he grow For the love of it, you know what I mean? 
And like you're just trying. You're like, well, what the hell did I do? Like, it's it's still that thing. You're like, so is my elevation off? Joe's at a much higher elevation than I am. So then is it just the soil? Is it not chernosium? Is that so important, you know? And then it can be the processing stuff because it's like that material that got analyzed was dried material. What I know from my report is my fresh material didn't smell at all. And so it's very challenging. To circumvent the challenge is maybe sell it fresh. But I don't know anybody that's actually grown Angelica sinensis in this country that's harvested it and had it smell like Donggui. And we've had Donggui seed in this country for decades, so... Um, one of the, the scary points is that this single seed of Donggui that's being sold by four or five different people in this country may literally be the same single seed. So it would behoove us to actually all take a trip to China and spread out all through Shanxi and Shanxi and Gansu and just start pirating her material and bringing it back. Yeah. 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 All right, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's, it's difficult, you know what I mean? It's like uh, there's still some desire to like hang on to this good material. It's not like the gates are open and they're like, here, have 1,500 named vo varietals of Angelica sinensis. It's like, what do, what do we have? Excuse me? No, that's my, my story is like, it, it's, it's not, none of it's really that clear. All that's clear is like no one has any of it's, that, nothing that anybody's growing has any, satisfies any of the quality criteria. It doesn't even smell like Donggui. You can't even get to the actual microscopic analysis to say that it's first, second, or third, or fifth quality because it doesn't even have the basic requirements. So just, we don't know how to rank genotypes I don't know. You can't, like, it's all like controlled. As a scientist, I can't answer that question. It makes me wonder what they're growing. Well, they're growing the stuff that's been growing in Gansu for, that was, grown and gone to, you know what I mean? I mean, it's like, we go back to like the whole question about Robert Newman, my friend, bringing these seeds over from the Nanjing Botanical Garden. So a lot of these seed sources come from the Nanjing Botanical Garden. And it's like Nanjing is not gone to. How many generations was this plant grown in Nanjing? And then we have genetic variation occurring because it's grown outside of its normal environment. And then we take that seed to the US. Now it's grown even further out of its native environment and has no support population of other plants, and now it starts just gearing off into some weird cul-de-sac of non-dongwayness.